While large-scale attacks on people grab the most attention from society and lawmakers, the impact of gun-free zones is felt on an individual level even more often. Over 17 million American women have been attacked by a rapist. One of those women is Amanda Collins. Realizing that my story's not rare, my story's not that uncommon. There's 3,000 reported rapes on our university campuses across the nation every year. That's what's reported. And a lot of information has come out now that universities don't divulge that or, you know, and I know from experience that a lot of rapes go unreported. And so realizing that <laughs> I could have defended myself. And beyond that, a life could have been saved and another woman didn't have to be raped. In October of 2007, while walking to her car after a night class at the University of Nevada, Reno, Amanda Collins was grabbed from behind in a parking garage. Since UNR is a gun-free campus, Amanda did not have her licensed firearm at the time. But her attacker, rapist James Bila, did have a gun. I struggled a lot with the decision of following the law, um, but it ultimately came down to, I'm a rule follower and I think rules are in place for a reason. And um, I had a lot to lose if it was discovered that I was carrying my firearm through any facet. I had a lot to, I, I would face expulsion from school, so I would lose my education, possible jail time. I would lose my ability to forever be able to carry a concealed carry permit because I would then be a felon. And um, and if I'm being perfectly honest, I never thought it would happen to me. We never think it's gonna happen to us. And I especially thought that it was never going to happen to me because of all of the precautions I took. It was a Monday night, I had a Monday, an evening class before I was going to school to become a high school English teacher. I parked at, in the parking garage that was maybe 100 100 yards away from the, the building that I was at, probably not even that much, it was just right across the way. And I, I specifically parked there because I didn't want to have to walk across campus at night. And I took the exam, I thought I did really, really well. We finished out class, and I left with a group of people because it had always been ingrained in me with Taekwondo that there's safety in numbers. So we walk out and I was the only person that had parked on the ground floor of the parking garage. And so I wished everybody a, a good week. And I had already surveyed the area in and around my vehicle to make sure nobody was around the vehicle, to make sure nobody was under the vehicle. Just all this stuff that was second nature to me. I don't even think I realized I was doing it at the time. It was very subconscious and routine for me. And then, um, Wish them all good, good night. Broke away from the group, and I, I walked to my, or I made my way to the vehicle, and that was when, um, when I realized is I didn't see the man that was hunched behind a truck in the wheel well, and as I passed him, he grabbed me from behind. In January of 2008, James Bila struck again, but this time his attack was deadly. Brianna Dennison was a college student from Santa Barbara, California, when she was abducted from a friend's house in Reno. Bila raped and murdered Brianna only three months after attacking Amanda Collins. Amanda believes that she had been able to carry her firearm. Brianna Dennison would be alive today. You know, I've replayed that incident in my head over and over, and it has kept me up at night, as I said before when I, I testify. But I. I know without a doubt in my mind that there is a particular point in time during my attack that I would have been able to stop it as it was in progress. I'm not saying I could have prevented the rape from starting with the way that I was grabbed and whatnot, but I know that I would have been able to stop it. And being on this side of my, my rape, my attack, Knowing that a young life would have been could have been saved 
as always, you know something, but then furthermore, people who say callously that they're looking out for my life and I should just be glad that I'm alive, really have no idea what rape does to somebody.